All right, good day to you. My name is Fred Oakman, and as always with me today is Mr. Jake Peters. We are P.S. This is Awesome, a PlayStation podcast, and this is episode 192. This is a show where we feel our sh- uh, feelings, where we share our, where we feel our sharings. <laughs> We're back, buddy. Where we share our feelings about the current state of PlayStation. Before we get on with the show, I want to invite you all to subscribe to our channel on YouTube, youtube.com slash PS This Is Awesome, and visit us over on Twitter at PS This Is Awesome and Tumblr, PS This Is Awesome. And if you want to make fun of our trophy lists on the PlayStation Network, you can find me at anchorless underscore 81 and Mr. Jake Peters at jakesaw01. And as always, you can write the show, P.S. This is awesome at gmail.com. And most importantly, don't forget to share the show with your friends and be sure to leave comments and rate the podcast as you see fit. And as a reminder to anybody who hasn't heard this yet, this is a video podcast. You can watch the show on YouTube if you prefer and look at Jake and I's very lovable faces. But for new and or longtime listeners, we now have a Patreon where you can support the show at a $1 level. The tier is called the One and Only $1 Club. So head over to patreon.com slash PS This Is Awesome to become a $1 patron, get a free die cut vinyl sticker, and a shout out on the show like LJ Ocker did. Our buddy LJ, thank you for being a patron. The sticker is on the way. Appreciate you, bud. Um, with all of that out of the way, Jake, how are you doing today? I am doing good. I just got back from what was most likely the last motorcycle ride of the year. Oh, bummer. Um, Because it is getting to be pretty much cold as fuck outside. Yeah, it's cold as crap out. I left work a little bit early to try and get... So I could try to get at least like maybe 45 minutes in before it gets dark out. Mm -hmm. And I ended up getting myself sort of out in the boonies so i didn't get back till basically it was dark and by the time it was dark it was pretty cold so not like cold cold but i don't like riding when it's like less than 65 degrees or so outside and it's only like you know 55 60 right now get your leathers on jake I mean, my I, I could. I don't know how well it would work. They're perforated. But. Yeah, leather works pretty good. I have these leather uh, hand gloves, riding gloves that Jim gave me. And uh, it, it's funny um, because it makes all the difference when you're when it's cold out. Now, I normally don't wear gloves. I usually hadn't been, but I've been wearing them all summer. And uh, it's nice when the bugs don't hit your hands. And, you know, it's probably good if you wipe out, too, to have something between you and the... I don't think leather's really going to save you, save you, but it would help maybe a little bit. It would help a lot. Yeah, you think so? A leather? Yeah, because if you have a leather glove on and you go down hands first onto the pavement, instead of all of your skin ripping off your hands... The leather would just tear, maybe. The leather might tear a little bit. And I'm sure you'll get some scuffs or whatever, but... Dude, I would never... I mean... I would if I had to, but I never ride without gloves on. Yeah. Safety from Jake. This is the podcast (laughs) about motorcycle safety with Jacob Peters. Welcome to the show. No, I'm just kidding. Um, Yeah, what's interesting about that is there's a a deep cut in in a new song that I've written for The Flood that you haven't heard yet, but there's a line on it that says I've got circles on the knuckles of my right hand and these leather gloves that I have, they, they have little circle cutouts on the knuckles. When so when you're gripping the throttle and you're revving it and stuff, when you take the gloves off, you have these tiny imprints of circles on your right hand. The follow-up line is from pulling back the throttle on my life, man. It's a great little line and, and an homage to motorcycle riding. But uh, I thought it was pretty clever. But speaking of gloves, that came to mind. Uh, we, uh, man, we have a lot to talk about. For those who haven't listened through all the episodes yet or are just jumping on, I was on vacation for a week. So Jake and I are a little bit behind, but we're strangely kind of not too far behind. And uh, so that being said, I haven't played any video games. I I, I played a quick 30-minute session with Darkest Dungeon when I got back from vacation, but I've switched to a new work shift where I'm getting up at 5.45 in the morning. My shift is at 7.15. I get out at 3.15. So my whole whole understanding of the world is slowly shifting. I've always wanted to be a morning person. I've never been able to do it for myself, but I'll do it to uh, keep my job for sure. So... 
I'm getting forced into this uh, kind of against my will. But, uh, you know, when 315 hits and I get to walk out the doors, it's awesome because I'm back in the office and I have all this extra time. I got the lawn mode today. But I'll tell you what, there's something about the tranquility of the morning. Jake, when, when do you hit your alarm clock? When do you wake up now? Uh, depending on the day, either... My alarm clock usually goes off, depending on the day, at either 4.45 or 5.45 usually. Wow. So, yeah, so, so I'm usually out guy. of the bed. I'm usually out of bed by... Depending if I've got stuff to do and I want to go in a little bit early, I'm usually out of bed by, I don't know, 515 or if uh, <laughs> if I'm going in like normal time or I don't really give a shit, oh. then I'll get out of bed at like six. 615 dude so my previous shift it's a six minute drive to work for me and prior to going back into the office i was teleworking my shift started 8 30 so i could have an all-night bender not that i ever did but i could literally but i need a shower in the morning but literally i could if i wanted to previously woken up at 8 20 walked downstairs logged in and been ready for work i my my alarm prior to this new shift usually would be set at around 7.30, 7.45. And that's enough time for me to get a quick shower and get to work. So I always push it to the limit. So this has been a, a big challenge for me. But I do appreciate the morning and the peacefulness of the of, of the darkness in the morning. You know, we're coming into fall, so the mornings are darker. And this is nice, too, because when I get out of work earlier, I have more sunlight as opposed to getting out of 5 o'clock in the fall where you only get, like, you know, 45 minutes of sunlight. You know, so I don't know. I'm kind of enjoying it. So I'm adjusting. So enough about that. I'm just happy that we're recording a show. But regarding gaming, um, I do have my 3D printer set up now. And I was able to find, uh, you know, I've talked about Hero Quest several times on the podcast. It's a board game that I'm really, really excited about. And Hasbro's re releasing it. Now I know it's, it, it is a video game, there's a PC game called Hero Quest. But there was an expansion for this game called the Wizards of Morcar, and it was not released in the U.S., and they had all these little figures that came with it, right? Well, I have a 3D printer now, and this expansion is impossible to find, so to get the figures, you either have to buy them secondhand from someone else who 3D printed them, and then they're going to turn your arm and a leg, or now that I can just print them myself, I did. So I've got the four wizards from the Wizard of Morcar set sitting upstairs and need to be painted. It's so awesome, and it, they're perfectly accurate. And the guy who uploaded the, uh, the files, this is something you use that photogrammetry stuff that I was talking about last show, I believe, but they have cell phone apps now that you can do 3D modeling by just like scanning your face or scanning something. So he scanned these little figures and uploaded the STL files and I converted them into my 3D printer and recreated them at my house. How crazy is that? It's almost like (laughs) teleporting if you think about it. It's like teleporting in a way. It's so awesome. But uh, speaking of the whole... uh, 3D printing, gaming stuff. You guys know I've been in love with Darkest Dungeon. There's a there's a character in Darkest Dungeon called the Man at Arms, and uh, I absolutely love love the character. And I found a free file. The, the somebody had actually an artist recreated a 3D file of the Man at Arms, and he was giving it away for free because of licensing issues. He was like, "Hey, if anyone wants it, just go ahead and take it and print it." And it was the second figure I printed, and it turned out perfectly. And now what I'm going to do real quick, I'm going to pull up the re- my Reddit post because I posted, there's a, there's a thing called resin printing on Reddit. It's a subreddit and people are always posting their first prints and stuff. And there's a lot to it. I've watched thousands of YouTube videos now how to support these files with little in, in the 3D modeling software and stuff. So I've got it, I've got it all going now for me. So I, I had to brag and post my picture of the man at arms from darkest dungeon. And then you have to give credit to the person who made, who made the, uh, the file, Um, You know, so I did that and I I just said first print built my own supports watched 1 million videos Here's a free STL from Titan troll miniatures on my mini factory and it's got 24 upvotes and then The the top vote is a quote from the video game So someone I didn't even say it was from the game and this person just writes I can hear it in the narrator's voice It is the raw strength of youth may be spent, but his eyes hold the secret of a hundred campaigns. <laughs> it's so good. It's this old guy with like a with a patch on his eye, and he's got this this mace in his hand, and he's got this big shield that has a couple niches in it, and he's just like ready to go. So I'm having a lot of fun with the 3D printer, but the reason we're recording a little late here I had an incident. It, it, there's a lot of fumes. I'm ventilating it. I don't have prop. I don't have any doors or or, 
or open windows to open in my basement, right? In the resin, what I didn't re- realize, and people always said it smelled bad, but I didn't imagine that it would be as as atrocious is the smell and it, and it would linger right so i bought all this stuff i have it in a in a marijuana grow tent which is hilarious you can buy them on amazon so it's this big tent and uh i'm not growing pots so it's completely legal to have a tent it's just a tent but it's designed for growing plants indoors and uh imagine like a, what a tent's made out of but it has openings for ventilation and for lighting and uh they zip tie real nice tight and shut and it's small. You know, you couldn't fit a human in it, but you can fit a resin printer. So a lot of these resin printers are buying these grow tents on Amazon and putting the printers in there for another berry to keep the fumes out of their, their space, you know. And you put it in there, and the resin printer has a hood that goes over it that blocks the UV light from curing the resin while it's printing. So it's extra dark in there, which is perfect conditions. And I even have a temperature control on it because in the basement, I have this little auxiliary heater sitting in there, and it's it's on a control and it's it's really a sweet setup and i rigged a a ventilation out my dryer duct from the grow tent out to the out world but the problem is is when i go to take prints off you have to open the grow tent you pull the hood off of the printer and usually you can just pull the top off right pull the plate off scrape off your print put it back on put the go up what i do pull it off put the hood on scrape it off pull the hood off put the thing on put the hood back on just to keep as minimal because there's a resin tray that sits on the bottom of the printer right and it's just liquid resin and that's what stinks as long as that hood's on you're pretty good you're good to go but the problem is if you have a misprint jake if you have a misprint what happens is uh your file prints but it gets stuck in the resin tray so the plate lifts off and every time it goes down to make a new layer there's nothing on the plate and it just keeps curing and curing and curing and it bakes onto your resin tray so then you have to pull the resin tray out and filter all this fucking liquid resin back into the bottle with like paint paint uh filters and it works it works fine the liquid resin is is not to be touched you gotta use like nitrous gloves and stuff it's it's a little toxic but the fumes are uh manageable but when you have a misprint it, it's it's all out the window because you have to re-empty this resin tray back in this bottle and it's a fucking pain in the ass and then you got to peel the, the the cured resin off the the tray and then you got to cure it in the uv light it's it's a fucking ordeal but it was something i was really interested in i'm actually getting pretty good at it except i had a misprint over work i was going to print a lesson from the witcher games and from the books this big like tree monster and uh, i've never printed a large a large model yet and by large i mean like maybe five inches tall right not huge but that's that's pretty large it was going to be like a five and a half hour print i set it up at six this morning i had the file all ready to rock and roll i got back on my lunch and i looked at it and the and it was lifting off but there was nothing on my plate and i'm like oh fuck this thing cured inside the resin i got another i got a fucking problem here so i just stopped it shut off the printer and went back to work came back and I spent after work kind of cleaning up the mess and, and getting the, the FEP film all ready to go and I'm trying to print it again but at a smaller scale with different supports so it's running right now and it looks like it's working so I'm excited to get it if it works anyways enough about it but it is kind of gaming related and uh I wanted to say that I do need to jump back in on our YouTube channel, do some more streaming of The Walking Dead Season 2. I haven't done that yet. It was on my to-do list this this October, but I went on that vacation, and then I got into Darkest Dungeon, and I did a little bit of the uh, the golf game, uh, Golf Apocalypse. I can't remember what that thing was called. It's it something Golf Club. Golf Club Wasteland. And uh, that game has a new trailer out with tons of review scores, and it's, it's doing really well. Jake, this is a game I think you might enjoy, that Golf Club Wasteland. It's cheap as hell, too. I, you should check it out. It might even. What is it? What is it for? Well, it's on Steam and it's on PlayStation. Is it's a PS4 game, but it plays on the PS5 and it's also on Steam. It's cool as shit, man. It's really cool. And I played through it and I streamed the first hour of it. But it's it's got a new trailer out, just toting all the uh, good review scores. But uh, there's also a Bubble Bobble game that is coming out in vr called uh i believe it's called bubble bobble puzzle puzzler or something and i never did get bubble bobble four because it's like 40 or 50 bucks but when that goes down in price you better bet your ass i'm gonna get that game because i really want to play some bubble bobble it's like the first game of its kind jake have you been playing anything uh i was playing um more diablo 2 uh resurrected and then more recently probably for the last week or so i've been playing uh far cry 6 okay 
Yeah. So you so, do have it. Yeah, yeah, I bought it. Actually, I, I had it the day it came out. I just didn't play it until, I didn't probably start playing it until, I don't know, Monday mm -hmm. or Tuesday. And then uh, I've been basically, I played it basically all last week, <laughs> a little bit over the weekend. And I don't know, I'm probably about maybe, I don't know, seven or eight hours into it. All right. So, Something like that. So the first news point you'll probably have something to say about then. As mentioned before, we do have a Patreon. LJ wrote to the show and he said, Dude, I know you're a vegetarian, so I'm curious to hear your thoughts on this. Apparently, PETA, the animal rights group, is all in a tizzy about the cockfighting that goes on in Far Cry 6. And they say it's glorification of animal cruelty and, uh, you know, they need to do something else. So for those who don't know, I'll explain what I've seen. And, Jake, you can explain it even further. It mm -hmm. looks like they are uh, – it's 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 complete – it looks like, number one, it's completely optional to do this. And my guess is that it has something to do about earning money or earning points or something is, is a side mission thing you can do. And it also, mm -hmm. to me, looks like – they're having a lot of fun with it, and it just looks like fucking Street Fighter, but it's two chickens that fight, and you control one. Is that pretty much what so, it is? So, the cockfighting in... So, first of all, I'm just going to go ahead and say this. PETA can fuck off, just generally. I have some opinions on... Yeah, well, well yeah, can I... I, I, I mean, I go not ahead. to be too political on this show, yeah, but yeah, I yeah. think that they're... I am 100... I'm a, I'm a pet owner. I... I'm not a vegetarian or anything, but I 100% believe in animal rights and think people that are cruel to animals should be rested and all this stuff. I think cockfighting should be illegal and it is illegal in the United States. Yeah. Um, Cause it's fucking cruel. But first of all, this world <laughs> is sort of inspired by Cuba where cockfighting is legal. Yep. 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 And also far cry is just a, it's everything is just ridiculousness in the game generally everything that goes on it's just like everything is it's it's, over the like, top none of right? it is serious it's like right it's over the top it's thing, crazy almost. yeah like, so just like wild yeah so like it and and, and you're exactly right the the cockfighting in the game is literally like Optional. The two health bars come up. It says round one, fight. And it's like literally Instantly fucking Street Instantly you're fighter. laughing because it, you but, don't even think about the cock. Yeah, right? but it's it's chickens. And it's not like they're, it's not like there's all this blood and like chickens are being, you know, mangled. And you're seeing all this, you know, shit going on or whatever. It's cartoony and, kind of. It's Yeah, it's like really just over the top and cartoony. And I can understand like if you had the brain of like a fucking chickpea you might be Influencer. you might play this and think oh cockfighting is cool we should have chickens, chickens and, and fucking have them kill each this other this is a great idea yeah but like you know and i could i guess there is an argument to be made about like well hey maybe you know a fucking 7 year old might play this and be like oh well this is a like this is cooler oh i think this is you know impressionable youth but first of all impressionable youth should not be playing this fucking game to begin with yeah because there are themes in it that are way more concerning than fucking chickens fighting yeah and i understand like when i first saw it i was like that i when i first saw that cockfighting was in the game when i came across it i was like oh this is kind of weird that they would put this in here. It <laughs> yeah. seems like a questionable idea. You know what I mean? Sure. But then when like I saw what it was, I was like, oh, they're like making fun of this. They're making fun of cockfighting. Like, like, like it's not, you know, it's not like, uh, you know, they're seriously like saying, oh, this is cool. Like you're like, not cockfighting. You're is not cool. like cultivating your own chicken fighters. Are you like you just play? You get to pick from a couple, maybe like a character list or something. And go go. Do they have special. Yeah, it's literally like it's literally like a character select screen from fucking they, Street Fighter, do, and you select the chicken that you're gonna use. Do they have special and moves then, and stuff? I don't know. I didn't really got that. Honestly, <laughs> I haven't. I, I've watched about it, but I haven't really played it. You know, like that would be fucking ridiculous. But like, <laughs> you know, um, oh, what if they did uh, in a chicken voice, dude? 
it would be pretty pretty funny and but it's like like i said i mean i don't think that this is something to get bent out of shape over i mean is it a little bit off color yes yeah sure but like but at the same time it's like okay we're you know i'm running i'm fucking you know running over people in a car and you're killing and I'm driving a lot of around and i'm game. like setting fields on fire and, you're and killing like murdering people. dogs yes. and like it's like okay if none of that stuff is impressing upon you i don't think the cockfighting is going to impress upon right. so you my, so there's literally nothing yeah in here so when lj wrote me about. right my my initial response he sent me a message on facebook and uh i said my initial opinion is come on it's a game but then my other thought process kicked in a little bit and said the kids are just fucking idiotic these days. And I put like a smiley crying face, you know. But I said PETA does have a reputation and for them to not get bitchy about something like this would actually make them look bad to all of their supporters and followers. So it's almost expected at this point. Like for them to not say something would piss off the few followers and fans that they have. They'd be like, why didn't you make a big stink about this, you know? And then I said, I'm really not even a fan of PETA because they seem really radical. And then I think the bottom line is, um, you know, it's it's really good and very important to have values. And it's very important to believe in equality and animal rights, right? You and I are both on that side. But it's nauseating at times when we just want to be entertained, right? And we can understand the difference. And, and I understand the point is, is that not everybody has that moral foundation. Not everybody has that kind of grounding that you and I have, or maybe like most reasonable human beings have that realize that this is just for fun. So in that regard, I understand that maybe it's a little bit in poor taste, like you said, but are we going out and buying chickens and fighting them because it's in Far Cry 6? No, because we just spent $70 on a video game. We don't have money to buy chickens. <laughs> but no. I mean, Far Cry 6 is only 60 bucks, to be fair. There you but, go. Um, I mean, it's like, in my opinion on this is, is regardless of how you feel about animal rights. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you just think about it from the fact, purely from the fact that cockfighting is illegal in the United States right. of America. And we're, I mean, I'm sure there are listeners outside of the States, but we're speaking strictly from like the North American point and of I'm view. And I'm sure that it still happens right. in the United States, so, but sure. It doesn't make but it. But like at the same time, it okay. it's like, my opinion is that, sorry, if you are going to, if you think that something like this should be banned from video games, like something, especially something that like this, that is that is so blatantly like making fun of it, then we should ban every video game where you murder somebody. We should <laughs> right, ban right, right. Every, every video game where you steal something. Um, every, like, you know what I mean? Yeah. So it's, it's, it's like you, if you can't, if you can't consume this media and separate it from reality. And not be offended by th- everything. Then you shouldn't be consuming it at all, and this, exactly. this art is not for you, right? It's just, and that's what it is. It's art. That that's the way that I think most gamers view it. And 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 in my and in my last in my in my last little message back to AJ, just because like I can't, I'm, it's been a long day. I could regurgitate this or just look at what I wrote on my ice. I said that I bet the cockfighting is a daily activity where Far Cry Six takes place. So if it makes sense within the setting and story, I guess I'm okay with it. Does it need to be in the game? No. Could they have spent a little less money and not developed a fighting chicken street fighter? Yes. Is it entertaining? Sure. It's not even real. Is it mandatory? No. Is it a fair representation of what happens in the real world? Yes. So it's a dose of truth, right? And I think people are so scared of the truth. They want to pretend like bad things don't happen. Like, you know what? So what? This happens. It's in a game. They're not promoting it. They're just saying, hey, this exists. And they're kind of making light of the situation because sometimes you need a little light in your life and you need to laugh about shit. And, you know, people need to not put their panties in a bunch. And this is coming from a vegetarian, somebody who like has been a vegetarian for longer than half my life. Like some of this stuff, and like I said, PETA has a reputation to uphold. If they didn't say something about this, chances are they would have got some blowback from their, from their whatever. I don't even know. They're not subscribers. Their constituents yes, or whatever sure. you want to say. And, yeah. and really, the only thing that's offensive about this to me is that it's just a reminder that cockfighting does exist. That's the only thing that bothers yeah. me. It's like, oh, I'm reminded that this fucking 
fucking thing still happens in the world. I'm not offended that it's in the game. I'm just a little bummed out that, like, this is even a thing in the world. Like, you know, it's just a reminder that it exists. And mm-hmm. maybe that is the part that maybe I'm just like, yeah, you know, I'm trying to have fun in a game. And, and being a vegetarian, seeing cockfighting on a video game, while I would appreciate it, I probably wouldn't partake in it because I've got a bleeding heart. And I'd be like, this is a little fucking off color. So I'm just not going to do this part. But I'm not mad at them about it. it you know, it's one of the things that like, I think would be cool if they would have done. And it, to my knowledge, this isn't in the game. But I think it would be cool if they would have had an option because you're like, become, you've become like a leader of this resistance or whatever. Just stop it. And it's like, if you could, as the main character, go to the person that's organizing the event and say, look, I don't want to support this as part of this revolution. And then that just doesn't, it just goes away and you don't see it anymore. And like, it's just not in the game. Mm-hmm. And you actually, as the player, could have some agency over that. That'd be kind of One way or the other. Right, right, right. But you can either, you can either... Uh, endorse it participate and 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 like take you know joy in the ridiculousness of it with like a grain of salt or you can basically be like no i don't want this shit in my game and then they would or, or in my revolution uh you know and then they just were like, okay, and that guy with the cockfighting ring just fucking bounces, and you don't see him anymore. Not the cock ring, the cockfighting ring. The cockfighting ring. Yes, just to make yes. that clear to the listeners. But, you know, <laughs> to be to just, you know, I'm pretty much we've said basically most of what we need to say about the cockfighting yeah. thing. But I will say, yeah. I know Far Cry 6 has been getting a lot of reviews, um, like middling reviews. I don't even want to say middling, like like it's it's been reviewing as good but not great because people are like oh this is really samey sure you know what i mean but for me i love that formula like i love just playing far cry games so (laughs) to me it's exactly what i wanted like there's some stuff about it that's you know very uh like i think that the it's it's weird to me that the cutscenes are a little bit janky yeah the regular like moment to moment gameplay is great on ps5 but the cutscenes are a little bit seem a little bit dated for what it is um i do think far cry 5 is a better game at least as of right now okay but i am i am really enjoying uh Really enjoying Far Cry 6. I've actually been capturing some yes. footage, so I'm going to try and do a takeaway. But just so the listeners are aware, you know, I play games because of my schedule very slowly. So my takeaways are going to be like one or two months after the game comes mm, out. You're not going to play a like that, I did. That yeah. I hope it doesn't like piss anybody off but that's just like i i'm not gonna do i'm not gonna like rush through the experience or put stress on myself or do a takeaway too early like when i'm not done with it yet just Mm -hmm. to try to get something out that's timely i think that you know if if you guys are playing it as the same at the same time as me maybe my review will be done about when you're done with the game right or you know, if you're not, you know, hopefully you'll be patient enough and care about what my opinion is whenever I'm done with it. And that's so. Yeah, that's the beautiful thing about our podcast is we we're not. You know, we're just regular dudes, like probably most of our listeners. You know, we're not we're not getting stuff in advance. We're not we're not trying to push anything out the door. We're we're just intrinsically doing gaming and talking about gaming. So yeah, man, I, that'd be cool to hear uh, a takeaway on it. Whenever you get it up, that's cool. Uh, if you don't, that's cool too. But. It'd be cool to have out on the content for the YouTube channel. Um, let's talk about some delays here. Welcome to the PS This Is Awesome Patreon page. For those of you that don't know, my name is Fred Oakman. And I'm Jake Peters. And we're a PlayStation podcast currently in our 10th year. Our first episode aired in July of 2012, where we discussed and speculated on the arrival of the PS4. Over the years, we've used this podcast to take a break from adulting, share our love of video games, and in particular, PlayStation. The audio podcast is available on all major streaming services, and we have recently made the leap to uploading video content and video podcasting to our YouTube channel, as well as the very occasional Twitter post or live stream. Over the years, we have covered everything from PS3 to PS Vita, through the launches of PS4, PSVR, and now PS5. As our audience has grown over the years, we have decided to start this Patreon with the hopes of creating a medium in which we can give you the opportunity to help support our show. And as a test bed, we're starting with a single tier. It's called the one and only $1 Club. 
So with your support at the $1 level, we're going to mail you a premium vinyl cut sticker and give you a shout out on the podcast. But at this time, unfortunately, we can only ship to the U.S. and Canada. But this is subject to change depending on your interest. So whether you're new to the show or you're a frequent flyer, we are forever thankful for your support and hope you can find it in your little gaming heart to join us in the one and only $1 Club. Until next time, like PlayStation, podcasting, and Patreon, P.S. This is awesome. Elden Ring has been delayed about a month. I don't even care. I'm not going to buy the game. Any opinion on that? I want to know more. But about the delay or about the game? No, about the game. I, I want to like see it in action. I want to see some reviews. I want to know kind of really how difficult it actually is. If it's a from software game and it's got like some difficulty to it, but it's not like this total freaking soul crush like all the other games are that they have then I'd be interested in trying it out. <coughs> Excuse me. But if it's the same Souls formula, just open world as opposed to a, little, a more linear approach, mm-hmm. I'm probably not going to play it, which is a bummer like for our listeners because I know a lot of people love the Soulsborne games, but like my brother loves that stuff. So maybe like if he decides to play yeah, it, dude, you know, let's we bring, can get his bring opinion him on, on it Josh, right? But yeah. Yeah, but I uh, but I know that if it's is if it if it's as hard as the other ones, I know I'm probably not gonna play it, or I'm not gonna play it until it's like on sale or something. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, so, there's, we'll see. There's two two transitions I can take this to. We talked about Josh. Josh and I. Josh, last time Josh was on the show, he and I had played the last Dark Pith- Pictures anthology. So just as a side note, the Dark Pictures anthology House of Ashes comes out on the twenty second. So I might be getting at him about that because I'd like to play the next one with him because that was an enjoyable experience. But that, that might be something you, you you mentioned how much you like the dark picture stuff. Mm-hmm. Maybe that's something that I can partake of for Halloween. You should get that one with me, man. We'll play it because I I mean I I wouldn't play. I would probably play the first one. You know, oh, just as something that I can. Man go. of Medan. I just don't. Like I don't, yeah. I, I probably just want to start from the beginning and America, just kind of like go. Yeah, through you probably should because game. the curator has a has a point in that. We'll get to that a little bit later. But speaking of more delays, CD Projekt Red came out today with a tweet, and they said that hey, we want to be transparent. It is what it is. Cyberpunk next gen. It won't. Don't expect it until the first quarter of 2022. The Witcher remaster. Witcher 3 next gen won't be coming out till quarter 2 of 2022. And they said these things take time. We've heard from the the people in charge of the teams developing these projects because I think this is a response to the some news articles broke that we might be getting The Witcher soon because it got raided in in some other country and they're like, "Oh, we might be getting it soon." And then as soon as those articles started hitting today, they just shot out this tweet and they're like, hey, listen, we want to be, no, you know, this isn't happening. So uh, maybe they've learned their lesson. I don't know. I seriously, at this point, could not care less about Cyberpunk. I was excited to play it when it came out and then when they fucked it up and then it kept being pushed and pushed and pushed and all these patches that they're coming out and they're like this is a fucking patch and then it comes out and it doesn't fix anything they like added some clothes and shit like that i'm like the the longer it goes by the more games come out that are better than cyberpunk well objectively we don't know okay 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 technically is it objective maybe not objectively subjectively yes right so subjectively cyberpunk is probably better than a bunch of games for some people right right a lot of people think that cyberpunk is an amazing game if you can play it and you don't have to deal with all the bugs like if you have a high-end pc and you play it people say it's fucking awesome and i appreciate that but the more i get separated from this game the less less i care about it and i'll be honest with you when this next gen version and i'm not even convinced it's going to happen in q1 of 2022 I'd be surprised if we get the next gen version before holiday of 2022. And if we do, let's say it comes out it'll, early next it'll year, it'll get patched a thousand times. I am going to watch every fucking video that comes out on how good it actually is. 
because I don't believe they're gonna they're gonna say, oh, it's next gen. Oh, it runs on PS5. It's Dude. native. That's great, but is it still fucking buggy? Because if it's still fucking buggy, I don't want to play. Let it. me just say this: I want to play it again. The game was awesome. My experience with it was so fucking good. I, mean, I believe that. Now, granted, it, the, it wasn't good. My experience. I had crashes. I had issues. But the game, I mean, I'm an artist. I can see the vision. I I, I enjoyed it. You know, it was good. It was good. It's I just a shame what I, happened. I believe the soul of the game is good. Oh, right? it is. It is so good. It looks awesome. It's just that I I don't want... <laughs> I don't want, like... Like, there's, there's another podcast that, like, because I also have an Xbox, I listen to, um, we talk on the podcast a lot about how we like the Sacred Symbols podcast for PlayStation. Yeah. But Last Dan's Xbox podcast, the one guy on that podcast hasn't played it yet. And the reason why is he says it's because he knows he's going to love it. He doesn't want his experience of the game to be ruined by the terrible state of the performance of mm. the game. And so I have a similar kind of viewpoint about it. Like I am almost positive that I will love the game, but I don't want to have that like like totally just sullied by performance issues and bugs and crashes and have to like overlook that to be to try and find the fun in the game. You know what I mean? It would be like it'd be like, you know, to take it back to motorcycling, right? It'd be like, "Oh, well, I love riding my motorcycle, but I but 10% Sorry, of the time, yeah. 10% of the time it doesn't start." Mm. So it's like, "Okay, well, am I really going to want to play or am I really going to want to ride if I know that 10% of the time something's going to fucking break?" Like I it, it's it's just one of those things, you know? And like I I imagine It's like resin printing, to, man. Go on, imagine yeah well imagine going back to like the last of us right the first time you played the last of us that game was fucking amazing it was, and it ran but so imagine smooth. imagine if the first time you played it it crashed a hundred times before you beat it that would have ruined would it you, would ruined would it. you feel like in the middle of the cut <laughs> scene at the beginning of the game with Joel and his daughter imagine if like all of a sudden Joel's like Meh! and it fucking crashes <laughs> Like, how would you feel then? The audio you know keeps I mean? dropping and his mouse like, hey, uh, you're not, yeah. And then you miss the entire dialogue. And it is like, yeah, what and like the fuck soldiers did he are say? like popping in like visually. It's yeah. like, come on. You know what I mean? Like, Naughty Dog would never release a game like that. Why should we? Like, okay, whatever. I mean, we can look past. We've talked about Cyberpunk so much over the, All right, over well, the years. Let's so, move but on. That continue. Shit's continue. getting delayed. Yep. Uh, there is a beta being released for the PlayStation app, the mobile app, that you can get on your smartphone, but be warned, it's only currently available to all of our listeners in Canada and Japan. Uh, so it's only available to you if you live in Canada or Japan, but the update will allow users to upload screenshots and videos to the app and then view them on the app and share them from the app. I really don't care. It's a news point regarding PlayStation. I'm actually trying to be on my phone less these days. So, uh, I don't know. It doesn't really affect me. I, I use the PlayStation app occasionally to browse through the store on my break at work and stuff to see what sales are going on. And actually, this is a good Halloween sale going on right now. So, you might be able to find some scary games on there, Jake. You were talking. But check the Man and Medan stuff. It might be on sale right now. But so, Go ahead. I don't care about the PlayStation app at all. I never have since they came do out. Do you have the it? First one like a while ago. I do not have it. But I'm sure it's great for browsing the store, right? Oh, it's and great. It's fantastic. Browsing the PS5 for stuff. But as far as like the social stuff and all that, yeah, like I don't really care less. about that. But what I want to know. Couldn't care less. Is why the fuck can we still not share content to Facebook or Instagram on PlayStation? Remember they took it away? You can never like do it ago. to Instagram. You can never do it to Instagram. Which well, okay, but Facebook and Instagram are the same company now. So, like, I imagine if they bring back Facebook, they will bring Instagram <sighs> with it, right? That'd be so, huge. Like, think about it. Like, why have they not sorted that shit out? Because it was... I know it's contractual. It's a money thing. Whatever, whatever. But, like, I hate Twitter. I have an idea. So, I'm not going to post stuff to that. I have an idea right? why. Facebook is okay. Or, or, sorry, YouTube is okay. But like I don't I, I don't wanna, do like, Twitch. Do you do Twitch? No, I don't do that either. But like I used to love I never posted often, but if I got like 
Some cool a platinum in something that I was really proud of, or I did something really crazy. Like one of the most, one of the last videos I posted was these like videos of just these crazy wrecks I would have yeah. on my horse in Red Dead Redemption oh, 2 yeah, yeah, yeah. that were just fucking ridiculous. That would just happen because of the environment, like you fall down a hill or something like yeah. that. Like, but like, just I atrocious. can't post shit to Facebook anymore. So, it's, yeah, and can't. I don't like Twitter. Like, I think Twitter's ruining the world. So, like, well, our Twitter account is really awesome. So, you guys should. I, also I don't disagree to it. that there there are good things about Twitter, but I think that like, and I think it's good for something like this. But I just I personally never use it. Yeah. So like I don't know what I would do posting stuff to that. Yeah. Whereas like Facebook and the thing that sucks is like I don't even use Facebook either for anything other than a news aggregator. Like I literally all the like I don't mm. look at all the shit friends post. Mm -hmm. I just look at like, oh, I'm following freaking Yamaha Motorsports. So like what are they talking about as far as like Motorcycles. You let go. it curate or ads like, to you and stuff about motorcycles. Yeah, like, like Revzilla pops up all the time and it's yeah, cycle yeah, like shit like that. Where, <laughs> but anyway, I, I just, but I did like the i the the ability to archive. Like I use Facebook sometimes to archive stuff that I share too. Yeah. Right. So like, you know, if I'll share something that I think is cool because I know like two years from now I can go to my Facebook account and just find that thing I shared on Facebook. Yeah. Like oh, here's the post when I got the Doom Platinum. That's fucking awesome. And it's like, this happened you know two I mean? years ago today. And it's like, oh, sweet. I remember doing that. Like, yeah. <laughs> so, like, I mean, it's irrelevant to this news point. But, like, I, it just made me think of it. Well, no, it is kind of relevant. I think the reason why we can't upload stuff to Facebook is because don't aren't they in cahoots with Oculus now? I mean, that could be part of it, right? And, and Oculus and PSVR Competitors. are kind of... I mean, Oculus... I guess the Oculus Quest you don't need a PC for, but, like... I mean, most most like high end VR you need a PC for, and you can't use a PSVR on a PC. So like, they're like, well, they, can, I mean, they're I guess they're technically competitors, yeah. but not like, like full on. What's the standalone Oculus thing called? Quest. That is the, That's quest. the quest. Okay, one. yeah. So you don't yeah. need a PC for that, but they uh, yeah, I, I would imagine it has something to do with just Sony's weird about their competition, and I wouldn't be surprised if Sony just said, "Hey, we're not putting our shit on your platform anymore." Well, and I'm sure, I'm sure Facebook was like, it could be partially that, and it could partially be like Facebook's like, "Hey, we want uh, you know fucking money and all this money because you have now PlayStation is way more popular since PS4, so." Facebook turned around on the contract renewal and was like, hey, you got way more users, so we're up in the price. Mm. And Sony was just like, fuck off. We don't need you. We don't need you. And they just let it go because, I mean, I don't think that it's impacted PlayStation sales at all. So why do they care? Yeah. You know what I right, mean? It's true. just kind of a bummer for us. Yeah, it would be nice to be able to do that. Or, or maybe, you know, what would be even, <laughs> what would be even cooler is if there would be a way to use the Bluetooth connection to upload the photos directly to your smartphone from the PS5. That would be next step. And I think that using the yeah, app, cool. I think using the app is the bridge, right? Once it gets on the app and you can view it on the app, then you can probably save it to your photo library and then post it wherever the fuck you want. So that might be the purpose of this beta for the app, which might be nice, but it's still like one, one step too many for me. Anyways, moving forward. The next game, Jake, to take advantage of the PlayStation trials will be Riders Republic. One week prior to the release of the PlayStation uh, release on PlayStation, um, users will be able to try a four-hour trial of Riders Republic. Riders Republic is set to release on October 28th, and the current games. Uh, taking advantage of the trials so far, it's a new feature. Is Death Stranding Director's Cut, which I think the trials thing expires. There's a there's a set time where you can try the trial, which is. It's not like a permanent thing, I don't think. So, Death Stranding Director's Cut, Bio Mutant, which I didn't realize was on there, Sackboy Big Adventure, and now Riders Republic. And I have not even tried this feature yet. And we don't have to correct what I said last show about the trials period because it does start the timer when you start downloading it, which is crazy. That's fucking stupid. It's true, though. How is that true? It literally it's true. will take me hundred percent true. It will take me four hours to. I was actually interested in trying Riders Republic, but it will literally take me four fucking hours to download it. Right, Sony. How does that make sense? Right, Sony, a complaint letter, my man. 
Say, we do all this fucking free advertising for you on our show. Talk about how fucking cool you are, but we shit on you a lot, too, at the same time. Sony's a f- fucking sucks. <laughs> they have good products, though. They do. They do. Although, I will admit, you know, I... I still consider myself PlayStation first. I think their yeah. their stuff is better. Their games are better. But um, I can understand why people like Xbox. Sure. Just from owning one yeah. and like seeing seeing like the way that they've turned everything around in the last generation with Game Pass and all this other like user friendly stuff that they've been doing. I mean, they're mm-hmm. they're the they're the they're the underdog. So yeah, they have to do these things, right? Yeah. But um yeah i if this if if what you're saying is true it is true it 100 percent makes zero sense first of all i agree and second of all it just makes me mad like why would they even do this you're just insulting me at this it's point. so obtuse it doesn't make any sense as andy Dufresne right, would say to the warden that's so obtuse would you say and he sends him to the hole for like five weeks for saying calling him obtuse all right, anyways, yeah, let's move on. A much-needed feature that was glaringly absent yet not really discussed is the PlayStation Store was missing a new games section. The feature has now been added so you can browse the latest releases by using the latest tab. Why was that missing for so long, and why did nobody say anything about it? Why is the PlayStation Store always broken now and forever and doesn't fucking ever work properly or show you what you want to show ever that's what i because want because they're know. constantly advertising their own shit on there well i'm sure it has to do with advertising dollars and all this kind of stuff but like but remember it's just well let, i mean even with this right yeah even with this it doesn't fix the issues where like you try to search for a specific game and you can't find it because <laughs> yeah. it's not like like if i search for you know Resident Evil and it gives me like 10 Resident Evil movies Resident Evil you know fucking 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 but it doesn't give me the first one until like the very end or you gotta dude, it's, and then it's it says bad. if you like Resident Evil you might also like this game and it gives you like the persistence and bio Bioshock or something and it's like wait what yeah. no, I want the game that I'm looking for it is better it the is story much is way better. better it's way it faster is way better. than it's ever been the speed but of it I just do blows think me away just organizationally they have a lot to do well still. when they rolled it out they didn't have a deal section they didn't have a discount section I was like what the fuck like why yeah like that's how you get most of your sales at least for me I'm always buying the deals man coupon clipper Oakman over here I've been I've been trying uh, to to buy more games at launch mm. to be relevant and to also be a little bit more supportive of the hobby mm-hmm. i i'm not i don't buy a lot right but you know i bought diablo 2 at launch mm-hmm. i bought far cry 6 at launch i bought returnal at launch i you know there's a couple other games yeah too, golf but. club wasteland for me and kina so we're getting better at yeah. it yeah but yeah good good job good on you jake that's awesome I want to be relevant with games. I still really want to play the new Resident Evil really bad. I also heard Resident Evil 4 is getting a VR remake or something. No, maybe it's on PC. Is it coming to... It's not coming to PlayStation VR. I think it's just on PC. Never mind. I'll shut up. What's that? Resident Evil 4 remake? No, it, it's... Resident Evil 4 has a VR version. But I was thinking oh, for I some yeah, reason it was that. PlayStation, but I think it's just PC. Steam or something. Any, hmm. I don't know. It doesn't matter. Um, so... Let me see here. Oh, so I say, how dare they? More people should capitalize on Halloween. We see less of it. Now, Sony has a Halloween sale going on, but it's such a great, wonderful time of the year, in my opinion. It's Jake's least favorite season because it smells like death. And he I'll hates tell you ranking. this. I'll tell you this, right? I hate Halloween because... I hate the erosion of summer. I just, I love summer. I love, I love, but the thing is fall going into winter. I love the holidays. I love getting together with family. I I, I love what, like, I love what these sales kind of, they bring that out in you, right? Like you see the splash screen of the Halloween sale and it's like all orange and shit. And it shows like, you know, costume quest and stuff like that. And you're like, oh yeah, fucking Halloween. Like it makes you think of the old, uh, like remember like on TV, mm. they used to have like the movie marathons for Halloween, so like the good. whole month of all October. And you could watch like the Ninja Turtle movies, like back to back and like all this other shit. Start wearing and, sweaters. 
Yeah, like Hocus Pocus and stuff. And like in some of these games, I've never really been a huge Halloween gamer. Mm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like Halloween doesn't really scream gaming to me, but like I love the, you know, Sarah and I always like watching a lot of the. Yeah, like well, we like watching like Friday the Thirteenth on Halloween and oh, stuff dude, like that. Dude, Just, let me let me pause real quick. Remember that big uh, Friday the Thirteenth collection that I have? Yeah, it's it's available on Walmart's website now for like eighteen bucks. I think I have the same collection. Oh, as all right, you. then never mind. Keep going. It's the it's like all the way through Jason X. Yeah. Right? Well, the reason I found it because or Jason Nine. One or the and other. You, yeah. Yeah. It doesn't include Freddy versus Jason. And it may not include Jason 10. Right. Jason in space, whatever you want to call it. Well, this is a bit sidetracked. We'll get back to the news point. But uh, the new Halloween movie came out, um, Halloween Kills. And Michael Myers is back. And apparently it's in theaters, but it's also free streaming on Peacock, which is the NBC platform. And I have it because Chelsea has it. So I'm going to watch the free brand new Halloween movie with Jamie Lee Curtis, and I can't wait. It sounds fucking awesome. Tell me about it, because I maybe that's something I could probably convince Sarah to watch. I actually, do you have Peacock? No, oh. but I, I'm sure there's like a free trial or some shit I yeah, could get. Yeah, <laughs> I, don't, I don't know much about it. I know that it takes place uh, somewhere after the first couple Halloween movies. So it's not an extension of the last movie that was made. It actually takes off as if Michael Myers was like whatever, like he had been in institutionalized or something and he gets out years and years I kind of want to know so that I, because I kind of want to watch them chronologically. I know, me like too. If, 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 there, if it's like, oh, movie one, two, and three and then don't care about the rest of them and then watch Halloween Kills. And I'm like, okay, that's the fucking order I'm going to watch them in because I want to, because I'm not going to watch all of them, right? Like Halloween fucking H2O and shit like that. Like I'm not going to watch any of that stuff. But like, if like the first one and the second one are important and then like this one is important, I think it would be cool. Like I'm interested to see how it turns out if they keep the spirit of the old slasher movie or if it's going to be like really fucking horrifying like the Rob Zombie shit. <laughs> Because remember that Rob Zombie Halloween movie was actually fucking scary? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So here, I'm reading about it right now. So it says that the original Halloween came out in 1978. It's an independent film by just is from uh, Showbiz Cheat Sheet, Cheat Sheet website. John Carpenter, we know that. Though it wasn't the first slasher film, uh, it was instrumental in developing the genre. And then it says, though some may see horror films as simply cheap thrills, Halloween has also been studied with particular interest coming from feminist scholars. So it goes on to say, the premise is simple. Michael Myers has been imprisoned in a sanitarium for 15 years after killing his sister on Halloween night as a six-year-old. He escapes and his psychiatrist goes looking for him. However, Michael begins killing again on Halloween, going after the friends of protagonist Laurie Strode and attempting to kill her while she babysits. He's feed at the end at least temporarily um that that must be halloween kills huh because how many halloween movies have been made it can be hard to keep track of what happens in the movie how the sequels and reboots fit into the original halloween 78 uh so i'll just read this out the original halloween from 1978 comes first it's the beginning of what can be called the original timeline in this timeline the next film is halloween 2 1981 then halloween 4 return of michael myers Halloween 3, Season of the Witch, usually isn't counted because it doesn't actually feature Michael Myers. So it's 1, 2, 4. Then comes Halloween 5, Revenge of Michael Myers, and Halloween, The Curse of Michael Myers. It's also the timeline that goes from the first two movies in the original timeline, then skips the next three to go to Halloween H2O 20 years later, then Halloween Resurrection in, from 2002. And additionally, there's a reboot series made by Rob Zombie, which you were talking about 2007, 2009. And they stand alone from the original timeline. You might expect Halloween 2018 uh, is a remake of the original, but it's actually a sequel to the original. Therefore, Halloween 2018 created a new timeline that starts with, ni- with Halloween 1978. The 2018 film even got Jamie Lee Curtis to reprise the role as Laurie following up with her 40 years later. Halloween Kills follows the event of the 2018 movie. The same actors reprising their roles. The leads received praise for their performance, and this alternate timeline received critical praise, so it seems like this will show some promise and perhaps eclipse the original timeline. It was meant to come out in 2020, but world events naturally delayed the production and its release. Additionally, Halloween Kills timeline should be uh, the Halloween Kills timeline should see another movie in 2022 entitled Halloween Ends. So they're saying, 
uh, Halloween 28. It's Halloween 1. Halloween t- the 2018 one. It's a sequel to the original. And then Halloween Kills. So there's only three for this timeline. The first Halloween and then Halloween, which is a remake. But it's not a remake. It's a sequel to the original. And then Halloween Kills. So Halloween Two is not. I, th- I thought you were saying Halloween Two was a part of that. It. That's an original timeline. Halloween One, Two, Four, Five, Seven, or something. But the way this movie just came out is playing on the sequel to the original that they made in 2018 with the same characters. So you're gonna go one, the original, the 1978 Halloween. You're gonna jump to the 2018, which is a sequel to that, which I think takes place 40 years later, or something. And then th- this film. So uh, my guess is in the one that came out in 2018, which I didn't see, something happens to Michael Myers. And I think three or four years later or something, he must fucking get out. And he's going after Jamie Lee Curtis a third time. He goes after her in the first movie. She's a kid. 2018 movie comes out. She's an adult. And he goes after her. And then the new one comes out. And he's after her again, I think, and her friends or something. So... I can do three movies for sure. That makes it much more digestible. We got to get back to the podcast, dude. Yeah. yeah. Jesus. Anyways, it makes me kind of excited. So um, if you want to have a watching party at my place, I have Peacock. We can all just watch Halloween some night. It'd be fun. You guys are welcome to come over. So anyways, what I was saying was Capcom is capitalizing on the Halloween thing. So if you head over to their website, they're celebrating the 25th anniversary of the Resident Evil series with seven surprises leading up to a final reveal on October 29th. And I just need to get more scary games, man. So they might be teasing some new Resident Evil shit, which would be exciting. Maybe another remake, possibly. Who knows? So keep your eyes peeled on Capcom. There's going to be some shit there. The November 2021 PS Plus lineup will include three bonus games, Jake. You got to dust off your headset. Get your dongle. Do you have the dongle yet? You don't. I don't. And actually, I don't think I can even get it anymore Mm. because it never showed up and uh, it got sent back to Sony. I don't know if they'll send me another one. Well, so so Sony comes out and they say, you're going to get three bonus VR games. My guess, and you guys can quote me, listeners can quote, my guess is that it's going to be at least one of these games will be part of the three, but... It would be amazing if we got all three, and I only really say this because I don't. I don't think they're all all uh, Sony publishers, but Blood and Truth, right? That might be a free one. Astrobot Rescue Mission probably is going to be free, I would imagine at this point. And what would be really great is Until Dawn's Rush of Blood, and if any of those three three are on the list. VR users who haven't tried them are in for a treat because they're like the best of the best, really, those three. Yeah, I think we got uh, Astrobot at some point, but mm-hmm. I wouldn't be surprised if they put it up again for sure. Yeah, and and what would be really be cool is if they gave you Beat Saber because I've never played Beat Saber. That would be fun, but I can't imagine they would be able to give That'd that That'd be a away. tough sell because that game sells fucking like hotcakes every Yeah, month, I can't so. imagine them giving that away for free or striking a deal to do so. So did you hear about the news, Jake, uh, about a Grand Theft Auto trilogy Rockstar's apparently releasing? Do you have any yeah. interest? Vice City, San Andreas, uh, and GTA 3. Depends how much they do with it. Mm-hmm. If they spruce it up a little bit and they fix all the controls, I'm 100% down to play it. Mm-hmm. But if it's just like re-release and all the controls are shit still mm-hmm. and it looks like garbage and it's all in 4-3, then I don't really care. Fair enough. I'm, I'm in the exact same boat. I've beaten every single one of those games. I know a lot of people only played them and dicked around on them. Some newer gamers probably haven't even played them, but I've actually I'm old enough that I've played all three when they came out and beat them all. I don't know if I even care about going back to them. I don't really want to spend any money, any more money on Grand Theft Auto stuff. I'll buy a new Grand Theft Auto game when it comes out. I'll buy Red Dead when it comes out, the new one. I'll buy anything Rockstar is doing if it's a new game. I don't think I want to pay money for something I've already done and, and paid for money for to begin with. And I don't think they're going to really do much to them, to be honest. That's my opinion. Um, and according to Push Square. And this was news that we missed while I was away, Jake. Sony is apparently looking to invest in a chip company. Not potato chips, though. That would be cool. But apparently there's a chip company in Japan uh, partnering with TSMC, who's based in Taiwan. They're looking to construct a billion-dollar factory in Japan. Now, everybody knows there's a very large supply shortage going on with semiconductors. 
And Sony possibly throwing some big money to have an investment in a facility like this to help them with the supply shortage may not be a bad idea. We'll just have to wait and see how it unfolds. Do you have any opinions on that? I don't know which supplier is doing uh, Sony's chips, Mm -hmm. but um, TSMC is one of the big ones. So there's like there's like literally four suppliers in the world that do all of the microchips in the entire world. Is this kind of in your wheelhouse with what you do at work? Do you deal with this stuff? No, no, not not on the not on the microchip level. Yeah, Um, we we do more high level stuff than that. If I'm getting out of my chair, um, I apologize. I don't mean to distract you. I'm killing mosquitoes as they fly. I'm still venting this room out. Go ahead. Uh, but uh, yeah, I think that this is good for them because all of their devices are going to have microchips in them. So if it lets them get PS5s out faster, if it lets them get TVs out faster, if it lets them get fucking, you know, record players out faster, whatever the hell they're making. Yeah. I think it's it's a wise investment because it doesn't seem like this is really going to slow down anytime soon. The shortage with regard to the shortage. Yeah. Like, and I've been seeing articles that say that like in some place, in some sectors, it might even actually end up getting worse before it gets Mm. better. So, uh, yeah, if they have the ability to be able to kind of do their own shit and get stuff out, then, um, that's great. Like one of the companies that I have a vendor for, they're a, they're like one of the few companies on the market in this particular sector that are able to get their stuff out with little to no lead time. And the only reason that they're able to do it is because they're going to all of their chip manufacturers and they're being like, look, we don't care if we're paying you five times as much as we normally do. We just want to have stock. Yeah. So they're just paying asinine amounts of money and they're just destroying their profit margins just to be able to get their stuff to their customers. They're, they're creating good so, customer relations though by doing that. Oh, they are. Yeah. And it, 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 it is a, it is an interesting strategy and I think a smart one, but if you have the ability to have your own chip manufacturer or at least, you know, have partial ownership Some investment in one, in one you yeah. have priority. Yeah. Like, fuck. Yeah. It's awesome. Especially for a company like Sony. Yeah. And all they have to do is run the numbers, right? Like how much we're going to invest, how long will it take, how much more are we going to get that we can move? Right? How much more are we going to be able to sell faster? How many more PS5s could we potentially have on the market? And what do we expect to sell? And how long would it take to make that money back? Right? Especially if, especially if they're going to come out with a PS5 Pro or something like that. Oh, I'm sure and they got yeah, something they always else spinning do. up. PS5 Slim, PS5. They'll have. Yeah, a, they'll I have, mean, dude, they're going to make a PS5 that's geared towards VR exclusively or something. You watch. They'll do something crazy like that. Yeah, even if it's, I mean, even for their controllers and stuff. I mean, the, the controllers now have intelligence in them. That's why you have to put fucking firmware on them now. Yeah, yeah. Like, I don't know if, if you, if people that have listened to the podcast that don't have a PS5, on the PS5, it actually, your controller also has firmware, not, not only your PS5. So if you, they update the firmware for the controller, the PS5 will you occasionally tell you. have to plug your controller into your PS5 with USB so that it can update the firmware on your controller as well. Which is good. I mean, it allows them to add and remove features and do all kinds of stuff. Yeah, but yeah. that means that the controller is definitely going to be more expensive. Oh, speaking of the controller, I didn't mention this on Far Cry, with Far Cry 6, but I, I turned the fucking adaptive, adaptive triggers off. Oh. I can't fucking stand them. Interesting. Like, I like I know that it's it's one of the most impressive things like the resistance. about the PS... The You're PS5 talking, controller, right? the triggers, the resistance. Yeah, but I can't stand like when I'm in these heavy firefights and stuff, and I'm fighting my fucking controller to aim and pull the trigger. Yeah, I just don't like it. So like, yeah. Well, I think it's cool. Like, I I wonder if I wonder how this is going to evolve. Like, if it's going to stay the common thing. I'm okay with them leaving it in all these games as long as they give me the option to turn it off. Yeah. But I wonder like how common my experience is it is because I imagine that most people that play competitive games probably turn it off because it just it, it hinders your ability to play. And I'm 100% but, sure they're tracking metrics on this like they know. Yeah. I'm just curious where it's going to go. I mean in and I and I wonder like if this will play into it at all as far as like them, you know, making new firmware for the controllers and stuff like that. So I, I don't know. It, it, it's irrelevant. I, I, I guess it's semi-relevant, tangentially well, relevant. I just thought it was an interesting point. It is interesting. Let's get to the let's get to the new games, Jake. That's it with the news. 
new games coming out now we are recording this on the 19th so the first date we have is the 19th so time you get this space break 2 on ps4 tony and clyde on ps4 and youtubers life 2 on ps4 just such a terrible name and probably an awful game are all coming out today or will be released by the time you hear this now the 22nd of october we've already talked about the dark pictures anthology the third installment house of ashes ps5 and ps4 will be available and then also my friend peppa pig on ps4 don't know what that game's about but my pick obviously just from looking at it would be the dark pictures anthology of those five games that i'm aware of that are coming out this week and that's really all we have for you today i want to finish my thought real quick the reason i was on the walmart store was and i saw that uh friday the 13th collection was because uh, the spirit of halloween everybody knows it's it's a big halloween store right it's probably countrywide now i stopped in one at winston-salem when i was in north carolina and they had these shirts that were Friday the 13th shirts. They were they were like long sleeve shirts though. And I don't have many of those, but it was awesome. And it was a it was a Friday the 13th shirt. I forget what it said exactly on the front, but on the sleeves it had all these different kill they like silhouettes of Jason killing people in different ways. And it was so awesome. And it said something on it. And I was like, oh, I need that. But they didn't have my size. So I started getting online trying to find it. It sold out. Spencer's also carries this specific shirt. It sold out there. It sold out. In, uh, I don't know if Hot Topic had it. But Spirit of Halloween had it sold out. You couldn't find it anywhere. And I was like, ah, oh, you know, because we have two Halloween shows. One of my land is two Halloween shows coming up on the 29th and on the 30th. And they are dress up if you want. Now, I'm not going to play a show in a full costume, but I thought I could maybe get with the spirit of Halloween and have a fun shirt or something. So I was trying to find a Friday the 13th shirt to wear. And I settled on one that's a Heather Gray shirt and it ships from Walmart. And it it says, instead of like, I I heart New York, um, it's like I and then the Jason mask. And then it says mom underneath it. Which is hilarious because Jason's mom's the killer in the first first Friday Thirteenth. So, I, dude, I thought it was a great show. Sarah and I have watched all the Friday the Thirteenth movies, at least like the first six. Uh-huh. We've watched the first six a bunch, right? <laughs> I still maintain I love Jason Jason as a character, uh-huh. but I still maintain that the first movie is probably the best. It movie. is hundred percent because there, there's a twist. It's so good. Mm-hmm. The first movie is so good. Yeah, okay, okay. yeah but so dude, good. that. Yeah, it gets, I mean, but, like, the fifth one is so fucking funny. Like, even yeah. though Jason's, spoiler alert, Jason's not in the fifth one. Yeah, it's the ambulance but, like, driver, right? Yeah, yeah. But, like, the movie is just so funny. Yeah. Like, Dude, it gets so ridiculous. Great. I will say this. I did watch the first two Scream movies while I was in North Carolina. I haven't seen those in forever. The first Scream was actually really good. Awesome. So good. And I'll say awesome. Matthew Lillard yeah. is an underrated actor. He was great in Scream. He was the one that was like, uh, at the end, he's always he's has like, that's like tweaking out. He's yeah. like, what's the matter, Sid? What's the matter, Sid? You know, are you scared? And he's holding <laughs> the fucking knife and he looks like this like alternative grunge kid. He actually plays a role in Bosch as an FBI agent, and I think he's also in um, the motorcycle TV series everyone loved. Uh, what the hell is that called? Anyway, you know the one, the big one that everyone loved, something Angels, uh, not Hell's Angels. Oh, oh, you're talking about... Um the one, the one that everyone loved. Jax was like the main guy, and he had a motors, an MC club, and it was like a really big thing. Sons of Anarchy. Yes, I think Lillard okay. was in that briefly. I don't know for certain, but speaking of Scream, there was a Scream Three, which was kind of shitty. Scream Two was all right. Timothy Oliphant was in that, surprisingly, because he's a pretty big actor now. Yeah. But then uh, Scream Four was actually pretty good. But there's a new Scream movie coming out. I don't know if you saw the trailers. It actually looks really yeah, good. S- Scream 4, if I'm not mistaken, is like a throwback. Yeah. Right? I mean, it's it's a new movie and a new it it's continues the timeline, but it's like a throwback to the like the first one. Yeah, yeah, they reference which, the first movie a lot, which is awesome. Which is awesome. I I haven't seen anything about the new one. But like it looks so it looks okay. It, it's like they're utilizing social media a little bit. So the the trailer starts off this girl in her house, right? She's on her phone, and it just says, "Hey, what are you doing?" And she like texts back, "Oh, nothing." And it's like, um, 
that's not true. You check it. I can see you or something, you know, and her, and her eyes light up and she like clicks the thing to lock the doors on her phone and the doors lock. And then she's looking at her phone and says unlocked and they unlock so the the, the bad guy apparently might be a hacker or has a way to open automatic. I don't know. It seemed a little cheesy, but it's the same neighborhood because the girl who's getting killed, I guess she gets killed. The original girl from Scream who was the survivor gets called into town or is proactive and she's coming back and she's telling the kids, listen, this person's not going to stop. They don't stop. This is how it works. You know, she's kind of laying the foundations. But the greatest thing about the first Scream, there was the movie nerd that worked at Blockbuster, remember? And like they're at the party and he's like, they're all watching scary movies and stuff. He's like, listen, there are roles if you don't want to get killed. The first role, you know, and he says something and, and all the party goes like, ah, come on. And they're throwing popcorn at him. like, no, I'm serious. The second role is you can't drink or have sex because everybody in these movies will die if that happens. So stay a virgin. And they're like, ah, get out of here, you know. And then that's when Matthew literally was like, hey, does anybody need a beer? And he starts walking out and he goes, I'll be back. And he's like fades into the hallway. And then, oh, it's so good. He's like, because the guy's like, whatever you do, don't say that you're going to come back if, if you're leaving the room, because that means you're not, you know, he's like, you might need a beer. I'll be right back. Uh, it's so good. I mean, that movie, yeah. that movie. It was meta, dude. Out. It was deep. That movie came out in 96. Such a good, scary the movie. The original Scream. And I think that it was literally the best slasher movie since like. Halloween the early or Jason yeah, movies, 100%. the early fucking Halloween, the early like uh, I personally feel like it was one of the best slasher movies since the late it's 70s. It's so brainy, it's so smart, it's written perfectly. It was written and created by like people who really understand the genre. Like it got into the brains of everybody who really liked it cuz like even the characters, like the main character, like she doesn't even really become a victim until she sleeps with her boyfriend. So once she has sex, like then things start going shitty for her and it's like, "Wow, that's so smart." You know, it's just so smart. And then the and then the girl who's like very uh very conventionally pretty she has a you know big breast she's dressed kind of skimpy and stuff that whole thing obviously if you're in a scary movie you're gonna die like if you're that she person fucked that's yeah that's what you're gonna get fucking killed and she gets her head stuck in a in a doggy door in the garage the garage lifts and it snaps her neck and it's like yeah that of course you're gonna die <laughs> of course oh, you man. know it was a great it was a great kill for the for the sake of you know the people who love those movies you, we could, kevin bacon gets a spear through the neck while he's sleeping in the first friday the 13th it's fantastic so oh, I lo- oh man now i gotta I gotta watch dude, it. Keith, I was actually just talking to someone today yeah. about wanting to watch the the new James Bond movies, but yeah. I might have the to new do Halloween. The, watch the first Halloween, then 2018 I Halloween. I gotta do the. I might have to do the horror movies first. You gotta do the I screams. Might have to have a little bit of a thing. Yeah, yeah. Anyways, yeah. I was just gonna say Keith from the Torben Times, the first band I was in. He and I were obsessed with with watching scary movies all the time. Like we were on the forums back when the internet just started. Like like telling this Jason site about all the bloopers and all the movies and, and we got them submitted and they've been approved and stuff. Like we were super big nerds about this stuff, <laughs> but yeah, dude. So yeah, tis the season, Jake. Well, Hey, it's been a good podcast. I appreciate you taking the time today. Appreciate the listeners for listening to the show as always. Make sure you guys check out the Patreon site. Don't forget that, uh, for $1, you get a free sticker and, um, uh, get a shout out on the show for for a dollar a month that is but you can always unsubscribe too so um for a buck you can get that for sure bare minimum for a dollar uh you can get that if you choose to give the show more you're you, uh, we're not going to be offended if you do or if you don't actually so it's just how it is but unfortunately there's no music at the end of the show and as soon as we get these records recorded we'll start we'll start promoting our own music man again but uh if you do have music or you're a musician or your band maybe there's just not many musicians out there you have a friend who plays um they can submit or you can submit an mp3 to our email account ps is awesome at gmail.com we'd be happy to include it at the end of our show for our listeners to listen to we'll, we'll, we'll uh let the listeners know any links all that good stuff to go find your music but we haven't had any submissions in a long time for that so let's peace out jake and uh, everybody have a nice week. Hopefully, Jake and I will be back next week for another show. And uh, there might be a lot. Oh, oh, real quick before we stop. The trailer for the Uncharted movie reportedly is going to drop on Thursday. 
which is tomorrow from the day we're recording it. So we'll have that to talk about next show. Oh, boy. Yeah, I don't know. But so, like Call of Duty, Carnival Games VR, and Castlevania. P.S. P.S. This is awesome. This is awesome. 